Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to start a series on bass drum technique. So I've done several videos in the past on foot technique, bass drum, and hi-hat technique in a few different styles, but never done a series on it, and I get lots of questions asking me if I can do this from a beginner's point of view all the way through advanced. So I'm going to start that, and today we're going to do the first lesson. It will be um, very basic. So kind of for beginners, and I will play quite a bit and do some exercises for my book, uh, which I know a lot of you have. So we'll start with the basics. First of all, the setup that I'm using today, I'm using a large bass drum, and that's what I normally practice with. This is a 22 inch, it's actually a PV Radio 1000 bass drum, which is a great sounding bass drum. Uh, it's closer to a 24 inch in sound because of the way it's built, um, but it does not have a lot of rebound, so you got to really work. And I, I suggest practicing on a bass drum at first when you're learning that you have to work a little harder. So uh, probably a 22-inch drum, which is what I learned on originally. I had an old set of Ludwigs back in the 70s, and uh, it was a 22-inch drum, and I really practiced on that, on that bass drum. And if you used the right technique, when you switch to smaller drums, which have more rebound, you'll be able to, you know, get a proper technique. And so we're going to talk about that proper technique right now. So first of all, I have lots of different cameras set up today, which I haven't done in the past. So you'll be able to see many different angles. So hopefully that should answer a lot of your questions. You can play heel down. I learned heel down at first, but eventually when I started playing a lot of different styles of music, I, I decided to start playing a little bit, bit of heel up, more like an inch up off the uh, pedal board here, which looks like this. And you'll notice there I'm moving my foot. We'll talk about that a lot today, that kind of pivot action, which is very important. But the number one most important thing that you have to remember, uh, especially for you teachers out there, is don't leave the beater in the head like this. So that's so common, and that comes with instinct, like when we walk, basically plant our feet on the ground for balance, obviously. But when you play the bass drum correctly, you should not do that. So this is bad technique, okay? That's bad for a lot of reasons, but the most important two reasons are, number one, if you do that and you stick it in the head, then you have to get it off the head. So that's actually two strokes. Instead of doing one stroke, where you're just bouncing off the head and the foot's in motion, you literally will double your speed and control there. So that's the most important factor. The next important factor is, is that if you record a lot, like I do, and you have that technique where you leave the beater in the head, you get these extra strokes that are really uh, not pleasant to listen to. And I'm a recording engineer, so I record lots of different drummers. And it's kind of startling how many drummers do that. They leave the beater in the head. And you're really doing a disservice to your bass drum because if I was to hit the snare drum like that, I kill most of the sound instead of letting that drum open up and ring. And so you're doing that the same with the bass drum. So this is beater in the head, and this is beater out of the head. So you'll, you'll probably hear a much lower fundamental if you're wearing headphones and not listening through your phone or listening through speakers, uh, which I totally recommend for all of my videos. So you want to make sure you're not crushing that. So to do that, you can start out playing flat-footed, which is heel down, just to understand the mechanics of it, because it's kind of hard to leave the beater in the head if you're playing flat-footed. And I learned, like I said, uh, originally like that. So you know, heel down, which is a totally valid way of playing, but unfortunately it doesn't work for a lot of today's styles, which are a lot louder and faster than they used to be. So I suggest doing that. So the first thing for you teachers out there that you could do is just have the student play eighth notes on the hi-hat. That is the 
first exercise, I always teach a beginning drum set student. So you're going to notice, uh, for you beginners out there, when you do that, you're going to want to move your body like this and rock and almost like you're riding a horse. You have to not do that. <laughs> okay, avoid that at all uh, times. So you're going to put your weight on your torso, all right, and all the weights here. So think of yourself like a tree trunk planted in the ground, which hardly ever moves, but the limbs move, okay? And you want to have that core going so it's balanced. Now, the other thing you can do, and I talked about this in some of my other videos, is you can put your hands on the floor tom. This is an invisible floor tom here. And you can uh, just do that. And that will help with your balance initially. All right? But the hi-hat thing is a real good way to start. Watch yourself in the mirror, and if you see yourself doing that or leaning forward or, or trying to balance on your feet, then you're doing it wrong. The balance should be here, not towards your feet. That's really, really important that you get that. So the next step would be to add the left hand, and you could just do the most basic of all beats, which would be. Okay, and do that for a while. You can play with, um, you know, Cashmere or ACDC's Back in Black, both amazing groove tunes, and uh, you'll have fun doing that. But it's a little bit slower, obviously. All right, another one you can do is, um, what is that tune? Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. So there's many, many tunes. But if you want to play with some music, those are the ones I use a lot of times with my students. Step two would be starting to play some rhythms uh, with the bass drum. Again, heel down. So uh, in my book, page 188 is a great place to start. You can put the metronome on 100 or slower if you need to and just read through those. So that would sound like this. One, two, three, four. So that's the first line of that. Uh, so playing heel down at first is a good thing to teach if you're a teacher out there just to let the student know that you shouldn't leave the beater in the head. Okay, that's one of the main things. So when they start playing with the heel up, they'll know that they're doing it wrong when the thing is just sticking in there. So now what we do is we start to lift our heel up a bit. Now I should mention before I go on that the, I have a tilt on my bass drum that's about an inch and a half to two inches off the ground from the front. So when you play, let's picture this is the head. The be It should be straight, not back like that. It shouldn't be too forward either. So try to keep your bass drum straight. And the beater, this is the beater, would just do that. Again, not this. You don't want to travel farther than you need to. But also you don't want the bass drum tilted towards you as well. That will um, assist in the bouncing on that head if it's tilted towards you. So keep it flat. The beater I'm using today is just a DW beater that I can turn around. I like those. They have a lot of weight to them. I rarely use a felt beater. I like a heavy beater. So I'll use a DW or an old maybe heavy Danmar wooden um, beater. There's lots of them out there now that you can get. But um, I like the big tops on there for some weight. And also the throw of it I'm hitting the node in the drum, which is the center. So you'll see I have this little patch. That's dead center. I put that on there for today so all of you can see. Normally I would not use that. And you want that to hit dead center, which is the tightest part of that drum. You can't always do that if you're using a 16-inch bass drum or an 18. It's not practical. But when you're learning, that's a good way to do it because it will be the tightest part. Um, so that's just something to remember. And the head... I know you're all going to ask. It's just a pinstripe, uh, um, I'm sorry, a Remo Power Stroke, which looks like a pinstripe. Okay, that's a good bass drum head uh, that I like. It's double ply. All right, so now we're going to talk about lifting up our foot. And the first thing you do is just lift it up just about an inch, about that much. Hopefully you can see with one of these camera angles. 
and then you're just going to play quarter notes once again like this. Now here's the trick. You're going to notice that I'm playing backwards with my heel hitting down. That's how I do my stroke. So, so I'm lifting up and I'm plopping down. Instead of sticking it in, I'm doing that. So once again, I'll go back to the beginning. Now there'll be a little bit of leg movement, but it's a very relaxed motion. It's not stiff. Again, if you start moving your body around, then you know you're doing it wrong. You have to be planted there, and your posture should be good, right, straight up, and just relax and do that. And then once again, add that back beat. Now here's usually the time I introduce the hi-hat opens, as you see there. Because again, once the student does that and they try to open the foot, they're just going to jerk to the left. So, like that. Uh, that means they're balancing on their feet, which they shouldn't be. Again, the torso, that's where your center is. So you don't see my upper body doing that all right, at all. It's very planted. Very important, once again. So uh, same thing here. You'll go to page 188 or any other rhythms in any other book, and you can just do that with um, at the same tempo, 100. Now please make sure you use some kind of click or metronome when you do this so you can develop good timing. One of the things a lot of beginning and even intermediate players do is the bass drum strokes will not be even from one to the other. So what you can do to help that is try to accent the second stroke. That's a good remedy for that. So if you're playing quicker, when I do those triplets, those kind of John Bonham triplets there, I'm trying to accent that second note so they both come out clear. But you see that I'm not leaving the beater in the head. That's the most important thing. If you do that, then you have to actually, like I said earlier, pull it out, which you'll never be able to play quick that way. So those of you that have been struggling with this for years and years, and I know there are a lot of you based on the emails and the comments I get on my YouTube page, uh, that's that's the answer. And then sometimes you send me videos and I watch and that's the first thing I say is get that beater out of the head, you know, and learn how to bounce it. It's really just like how your hands work. See how relaxed that is? I'm not doing this. Which is exactly what you're doing when you play the bass drum like that. All right, so those are the first steps that you want to do. Now, uh, I would always say, right away, try to introduce some different rhythms. So uh, in my book, as all of you know, there's lots and lots of rhythms. We can go to the page that we always use here for teaching, which is page 7. And what we'll do is we'll play sixteenths. Because the important thing here is matching up the bass drum and the hi-hat, which is another huge problem that drummers have. They're uneven because they cannot match up their hands to their feet, all right? And that's just a lack of technique. And then you can add the backbeat. So if I put the metronome on 16th, we'll slow it down here. You want to start real slow, like 70.
and then keep moving it up till you get to about 100. All right, that's a good tempo. And that's physically demanding, but you know, you have to play tunes like that. Also practice with the cross room click, which will actually change the way it feels, so. And a lot of times, for many drummers, that feels better because you're putting a little bit of weight on your left side, so you're anchoring your body. So that's just an interesting little side note there when you play that cross room. So after you do those, and you, uh, on page seven, you go to page Eight. Now this is where it becomes difficult because all of a sudden instead of single notes you're playing double notes. All right, and this is where everybody just sort of, you know, has issues. <laughs> Let's say I'm going to move this little muffle over here so I can play more cross room. So those doubles give people problems because they want to again drive that uh, beater into the head like this and use their weight to shift forward. What you have to do is just maintain that balance, that core. All right, and then just you're going to pivot your foot now. This is the first time we've seen this. Now, there's many ways to pivot, okay? But I pivot left to right. So if I was going to do uh, something simple. So the foot is always in motion. That relieves stress from some of the muscle groups. So when I play fast... When I was a kid, I played in a Led Zeppelin cover band. And of course, that's the immigrant song. Everybody knows that. Uh, I struggled with that. I was about 12 years old, so I guess I had an excuse, but because I was trying to play flat footed. And that was one of the main reasons that tune and the tune Good Times, Bad Times, that I started doing Heal Up. And once I did that, it was easy. So uh, that was something I would practice for years quickly. So all those little inner rhythms there, you see I'm locking those in with those 16ths, or I'm trying to. That's what you need to practice. And that tempo was 120. That's a good practice tempo. Of course, you're going to need to be able to play faster than that, but that's a good goal to go for over a number of months is 120 for those double strokes. So if we look at page 8, and uh, we'll do it slower now. Let's say we go back to 100, and we'll put it the metronome on the 16th, and I'm going to play the most basic hi-hat rhythm, with this, which is eighth note. And I'm going to play backbeats and the doubles with my foot. One, two, three, four. So you see there uh, what I said before about accenting the second beat. That's where I'm doing it. So they all sound even. Also gives it some feel, some groove. So it doesn't sound like a drum machine. One reason uh, drum machines or sequencers sound like drum machines or sequencers is because you're not accenting different bass drum notes. So a great programmer uh, on the computer will do that. But if someone doesn't know, that's how you know right away uh, that that every note is the same exact velocity <laughs> all right but you want to vary that that's what makes it funky so try to do that so and then you'll do the sixteenths which is very important like this and so on.
So you can start much slower than that if you need to start at 80. That's fine. That's 100. But you also need to get it faster. So let's go back to our kind of 120 tempo and play it like that. One, two, three. So that's what you want to do for that. And then 16, so I'll play that for you as well. And you go through the whole page, or you could do one bar over and over. And you could use many books for this. You could use the Gary Chester books, the Louis Belson book, anything with rhythms. All right, works, great. And that's really the first way that you can start to practice. Then you can start to do ostinatos, which are the single most important technique building thing you could do with your bass drum because you're just doing repetition. And that's the key to everything is repetition over and over. It builds strength, right? Endurance, timing. So the most obvious one to do is the samba rhythm. So in my book, you'll see plenty of that, <laughs> as we've talked about all these years. So uh, if you went go to page um, 21, which is the first of the Brazilian ostinatos, we have the generic. Now that's where you'll start to see that pivot, m most importantly, on that double there. All right? So if I did like number four, like this. looks like that. But when you play uh, some of this samba for real, you want to accent that second note. So So let's talk about that. I call them weighty notes, notes with weight. So what you're doing there is you're using height. Just like with your hands, when you want to get a bigger accent, you might just come up a little bit higher. It's the same exact thing with your foot. So I'm lifting up a little higher like this. It actually feels really good to use that weight, so. And when it's faster, so you see there, I'm um, accenting particular notes. Sometimes I'm playing it straight, sometimes I'm bringing it out. You must have the ability to do that if you want to play these rhythms correctly. Remember, that's playing the sordo part, as we talked about in all my Brazilian rhythms videos. So you have to be able to, to have control over the bass drum. So you just don't have two dynamics, you know, loud and louder. You need to be able to play soft. So let's talk about playing soft real quick. When you do that, you can play heel down. So if I was going to play a really fast kind of jazz thing and feather the bass drum, heel down but what I would suggest is playing heel up just a little so you're just lifting up that uh, heel like that but the trick is you're keeping that beater really close to the head like this so if you're gonna play soft in the snare drum you're not gonna do this you're gonna play really close to it right and that's what you want to do with your bass drum
So you see how close I am? I'm not more than an inch away or so from that head. That is really, really tricky. That takes years to develop. But you can do you can practice it by just, just doing very slow, a basic, you know, jazz beat. Think about an upright bass player playing those pizzicato bass notes. Doom, 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 doom. So it's not long notes, it's short notes. Now when you want to go for three strokes or more, uh, that's always interesting. I remember being at a, when I was a kid going to a Peter Erskine clinic and someone asked that, how do you play, uh, you know, three notes on the bass drum? And he had a great answer. He, he said, go for four, <laughs> which, which I thought was great. Uh, but that's not necessarily what you, you want to do. I, I thought it was funny, but that's not what I do. I do a pivot where I'm going. So I'm moving back and forth like that. And with real fast kind of shuffles like this. That. Uh, pivot becomes almost uh, unrecognizable because it's moving so fast. So the slower your tempo, the bigger the pivot, right? The faster your tempo, the smaller the pivot, the closer, it's like compression. It closes in the faster you get. That's how it works. In mechanics. So let's just uh, recap what we've talked about. So the first thing you want to do is start playing flat-footed if you're a beginner just like this. The purpose of that is to not stick the beater in the head because it's very difficult to play flat-footed and not do that. And then you want to do your exercises like we talked about in the book or any book uh, with eighth notes on the hi-hat, sixteenth notes on the hi-hat, both those groupings. We'll get to triplets in another lesson. Then you want to lift the heel up and do the same exact thing but pay attention to not playing into the head. You always want to make sure you're looking at yourself in a mirror or videotaping yourself so you're not rocking back and forth, which is so common. And the weight should be distributed on your butt, on your torso, just straight down. All right? And so don't lean to either side. That's very important. And then you can get to the double strokes, which are the pivot exercises. And to start that, you just do... And uh, page 8 on my book or any 16th note page after that works great. Also, the samba rhythms with that generic is fantastic for, for doing that. So this is lesson one, and there'll probably be several in this series because it gets pretty crazy. And the next lesson will work on hand and foot stuff, which is really important. So I'll just play a little, and then we'll call it a day. <laughs>